Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital. It is Friday, April 29th, and it's beautiful to see that we were managed to pull profits out of this falling market. Um, from the start of the day, these markets looked very brittle and weak, and anything but China was basically under pressure all day, nonstop selling, nonstop selling. Now, the beautiful thing is congrats to those that took the IQ trade with me. Uh, we profited it greatly on this IQ trade. We got in here at this 314 level. You can see over here, I issued a buy alert to all of the members. And look at this pop that it happened. It was trending up, trending up, and then this gap up today on the news that China's COVID um, restrictions and basically COVID cases was easing. So the fact that you now have potentially the People's Bank of China stimulating the economy, as well as COVID easing, it sets up such a strong, powerful recipe for success when it comes to the China stocks. All of the China stocks were ripping. They were they were flying. Alibaba, BEKE, CWeb. I mean, all of them. We've been pounding the table, not just short China stocks, that they're going to be outperforming U.S. equities, and that's certainly what they had. Um, IQ it popped. We netted on IQ 21.3 percent on a quick swing trade. I mean, we sold all the way up here at this red line, and it's a beautiful th a thing of beauty that we sold up here at this uh, 380 mark today because it com completely started collapsing. It basically has fallen an extra 6.6% from where we sold, and just due to the fact that the markets are weak. And now, I hate when these stocks leave these huge gaps. China stocks are notorious for this, and they often do come down and get filled. So I'll be looking to potentially re-enter and accumulate more China names once they fill their gaps. So all of these charts on China are pretty much very similar. Um, even if you look at BABA, um, very similar, gapped up and faded. So often these gaps need to be filled. If we go to the daily basis, you can see it's a mega gap. We were super close to come filling these ones down here, but we never completely filled them. But now you even have another gap. And this is typically how these Chinese stocks move. They're very news oriented, headline driven. But if you accumulate and start positioning yourself before the news events by buying in small positions at key technical levels, you're going to catch these rips and profit beautifully. Another trade we did today was shorting Caterpillar. Um, the reason we shorted Caterpillar is near the all time highs. If you notice that Caterpillar was running into some some struggles and some pretty much some some powerful resistance. Um, the reason I decided to short was I started seeing an intraday bearish um, distribution signals happening. And the fact that now you couldn't close above the 50 day moving average is pretty, pretty bad. I mean, you're starting to form this bear flag pattern here um, that's very clear to see. And the question is, is when this bear flag breaks, it's going to potentially put you down all the way down to these levels down here. So just keep that in mind. I do think now with the slowing economy, now that um, people are factoring in um, basically a declining GDP, certainly for the last three months, that's going to weigh in on some of the investment thesis. There's a lot of people that are in denial about where the economy is going, but it's clear as day to me. I think we're definitely heading into a recession, uh, no matter if they don't want to call it that, I think we're heading there. But where I see downside and potentially looking to cover this short um, is down here. That would basically give us an easy 7.7%. You could potentially hold it a little bit lower than that. Um, honestly, the long term channel that I do see it heading or having to get to is basically this, this previous pivot high in 2018. It'll also coincide with very close to the center point of your channel. And then it also fills a key technical gap down here on the charts that I think is made and just waiting to be filled over the long term. If we look at Amazon, we're now long Amazon 2452. So we're in the money. Hopefully we can start seeing this flag build sideways and build up some momentum. Um, Spotify, we're still in the money on our Spotify. I'm really impressed with how Spotify held up today. Um, we did put in that beautiful reversal candle yesterday, but it's followed by now another reversal candle. So it's really kind of up on the on the fence in terms of where we go. If the markets catch a bid, this thing's going to fly up. I'm still looking to potentially take profits around this 110 mark. Um, you can potentially hold it higher if the markets really catch a bid. 
um, to about here. This 119 level, that's your previous pivot low, bounce where you broke it. Often price likes to retrace to where it broke down. So this is where you broke down. It would make sense that price retraces down over here. Now the question is if the price is gonna hold this bottom and retrace there, or does it need to go lower, flush out more of those weak hand longs, and then potentially have a bounce? The time will tell. It's certainly um, interesting times in the markets. So Tesla is a really interesting stock. We were managed to day trade this um, actually four times today, and we, we won every single trade um, in the day trade room. But Tesla has now broken key support, and you are doing this bear, you're forming this bear flag pattern. And the question is, is, is it going to break? So a lot of people are still ultra bullish on Tesla. I'm not. I think it's a great company. I love Elon Musk and what he's doing for the world, but I don't think it justifies the valuation that it's at. And there's going to be potentially so many people that argue with me regarding their valuation and how they value them and why they're valuing that side. But when I still hear people bullish, even though Elon Musk is selling and selling and selling, we just got word he sold just over 3 million shares, close to 3 billion. And there's rumors that he's potentially sold up to 9 billion to aid him in the Twitter deal. The Twitter deal, he's leveraged roughly 12.5 billion in stock. Now, he doesn't really need that 12.5 billion yet because the deal hasn't even gone through. It hasn't gone through with the Twitter board. It hasn't gone through with the SEC. And the fact that he's selling stock now, I think it really puts into perspective a clear thing that he's probably not expecting the stock to be as high when come times in basically when the fall, when this deal is potentially completed. So this fall, this deal with Twitter would only be completed roughly in um, the third quarter, sometime in the third quarter. So he's selling potentially three to six months ahead of when he actually needs the money. And why do you think he's doing that? If you just think about it logically, if you were to get a better price now, wouldn't you sell now? I think that's Elon Musk's prerogative and his mindset that I think he knows Tesla's going down in valuation, so why not pull some of the juice out of the lemon now before it starts to really fall and collapse? Um, what else can we look at here? It was good to see our PLD trade down 7% today, so now we're in the money on that trade. I still think there's more downside here. You are coming into some support on this 50-day and trend line. I will be watching that to potentially exit my trade that would roughly be in a seven percent gain um, potentially though i do think you break that support after a small bounce and likely come to test the lower range of this channel which may also coincide with the 200 day moving average whether or not um, i plan to stay in the trade that long i have to assess on the fundamentals and where say the nasdaq and the s p 500 are and interest rates and what the fed is doing and ultimately how the large caps are perform or the mega caps are performing. So if the markets are weak, I'll hold this short longer. If the markets I'm expecting a bounce as they head into technical support, I will likely cover this short because it also will likely have a bounce along with the rest of the markets. Um, let's take a look at Chevron, our Chevron short, wild price action on Chevron. Let's flip to the daily. Chevron, we're still in the money. Oil hasn't even really come down yet. So once oil really starts to come down and break that key support zone, then Chevron will come down. I'm still looking to cover it around the 144 level. We have put in this bear flag. You've got this reversal now. The beautiful thing is that you've had the 50-day moving average as resistance, and you can clearly see you've been rejected off of this purple 50-day moving average. That's not a good sign for the bulls. It's a great sign for us since we're shorting Chevron and we're also shorting oil. I do think it comes down to this 144 level pretty quickly. So be on alert potentially next week for our covering of our Chevron short. If we look to the US oil chart, you did put in this beautiful reversal candle. Um, that is going to be a thing of beauty if that holds and we start trending lower because you basically broke out of this wedge pattern and with technical analysis, you need to confirm a second day above that price to, in order for it to be considered a breakout. And now the beautiful thing about this type of price action here, we've kind of got two signals in one candle that happened today. So we had this breakout of the trend line. We were looking for confirmation, and that's how it started. On an intraday basis, this was rallying up, rallying up, rallying up. 
you filled the key technical gap that was left open and then you started reversing. So this is beautiful to see because now you've negated the confirmation. You failed to confirm above that trend line and now it's likely that since you failed that you head all the way back down minimum to the bottom of this wedge pattern. And the question is, will this hold? We now know every time you hit a support once, twice, three times, it gets weaker. So the fourth time is a likely probability that it breaks. If it breaks, you go down to this previous pivot around 85. That will be a wonderful collapse from the current price. That would roughly be a 18% um, decline in the price of oil. That would certainly help all of us at the pump. And that would potentially coincide with a weaker dollar. And then since the stock market needs a weaker oil or weaker energy prices to do better, it does favor a potential bounce in the stock market. So if you notice how everything is aligning and correlating, we have potentially, I'll go over the US dollar as well, but we have potentially a weakening dollar. We have potentially weakening energy and oil prices, which is typically bullish for um, the stock market as stocks head into an oversold condition and technical support. Um, oil is starting to put in signs of it's another downside move imminent. So kind of all those correlations favor um, how we're positioned in the market. We expect a decline in energy and we expect somewhat of a bounce in the markets, but we still have a lot of shorts out there in the bigger cap tech space that are certainly still overvalued nonetheless. Let's jump, let's take a look at natural gas quickly. Natural gas on the four hour chart, we are trading in this wedge. You can see pivot high to pivot high to pivot high, pivot low to pivot low. We have not taken out these lows yet, but we have not taken out these highs or this high here. So this channel is acting as resistance for now. The big question on Monday is, is this channel going to keep us in check or are we going to break out and look for confirmation? Obviously your big level is closing above this four hour topping tail and this um, pivot zone action here. If you can close above that, then it's likely on the UNG you're going up to fill the gap. And roughly on natural gas, it's around this uh, 775 mark on the UNG equivalent. Okay, so we're still holding on to our KLD. Obviously that had a decline today. Natural gas has these sharp fluctuations. But if again, on a technical basis, it's acting along the same cycle as oil has, which shows that there is still significant declining um, behind the natural gas price. And then also when you factor in the warming season, when you factor in that now 10 countries in the Europe or in the EU have now started Russian ruble accounts with Gazprom, which is Russia's biggest natural gas and energy supplier. So that is showing that they're willing to pay for their natural gas in rubles. That could, couldn't be bullish um, for our short positions on natural gas. The fact that they're now ready to pay for natural gas in rubles is certainly going to lessen the supply and demand, sorry, certainly going to lessen the demand for the U United States natural gas or the LNG that we've been shipping to Europe for the past several months. Not saying all of it's going to stop, but certainly if countries start needing the Russian gas, which in Europe they do, they honestly do. And I think it would be a sin to be hurting your people via four or five times um, energy costs just to spite face. You know, you're, you say you don't want to support the Russian economy, which I am all for that, but numbers don't lie. When you break it down on a mathematical dollar by dollar basis, Europe is losing more money and hurting more of their citizens in terms of financially. They're losing more money, Europe, than they would ever be hurting the Russian economy if they stopped buying their natural gas. They're, 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 they're losing billions and billions in high, high rocketing energy prices every single day just because they don't want to buy Russian natural gas. They are losing more money in their own economies in Europe than what Russia would be if, you, if they stopped buying all of their natural gas and oil. So to me, that doesn't make sense. It's not really a useful financial sanction. I certainly think there is other ways to go around, but to simply spite yourself um, and hurt your citizens in terms of financial hurt, you know, four to five times the energy prices is utter 
utter craziness and I would hate to be paying that. We're already paying astronomical prices here in North America, but Europe is just getting crushed. They are truly getting crushed. That being said, stay tuned for more trade alerts and we will see you next week as we head into, um, as we approach closer to the Fed meeting and we'll look to see how the mega caps respond under these new recessions.